Oh man, oh man, oh man. It has been far, far too long <laughs> since we've uh, done one of these. Hello, hi, internet, hello. My name is Wes Gardner, and I am a professional illustrator and uh, artist in the entertainment industry, tabletop role-playing games, card games, all that fun stuff. Uh, credits include Star Wars, Riot Games, Warhammer 40,000, Adidas, Universal Studios, Warner Brothers, and some stuff we can't talk about yet. <laughs> but, uh, man, this is, this is really bizarre for me. So, a little background before we start painting, because I know a lot of you will be watching the, the video on demand version. Let me turn this down a little. Uh, video on demand version on YouTube. So I want this to be as accessible as possible, no matter how you're catching it, whether you're here live or you're going to be watching a video on demand. I know I love keeping stuff on in the background, and uh, yeah, that's totally fine. Um, I'm happy to have you. Either way, we're all happy to have you. And yeah, so this is like a whole different thing. I used to Twitch stream like 40 hours a week back in the 2014, 2015 time um yeah so really bizarre to be back and you know a lot's changed since i did all that if you go back on my youtube archive you can see a whole bunch of twitch archives from years and years and years ago uh primarily focused on variety gaming and stuff but now you know we do art as a career it's my third career um we're doing it we're doing the thing we dreamt of since we were like five years old and we're being able to work with people like star wars and warhammer and it's nuts um, but I wanted to reintroduce streaming, not all the time. Uh, this won't be a super regular thing, hopefully four times a month ish, maybe once a week. It really depends. I have a one and a half year old, almost a two year old son. I have an almost 11 year old daughter and we have another baby coming on the way in the summer. So your boy's busy, um, <laughs> being the dad and doing the art and a bunch of NDA stuff. But what the primary focus of this is going to be is just to hang out, answer questions, um, just work on some personal stuff. You know, if I'm drawing anyway, if I'm going to be painting regardless, might as well hang out with you guys. And uh, a lot of fun be able to talk shop and every once in a while we might do a game stream. I don't know, shake things up a bit. But really, I'm excited because this gives the potential to do like portfolio reviews, things like that, live, in person, kind of give that immediate feedback. Um, but like I said, even if you are catching this, the video on demand, um, welcome. So yeah, I've done this a lot, but it's been years and years since I've done it. So pardon me, I might be rusty on this, but really what we're going to do today, we are going to be, um, just starting a new, starting a new thing, starting a new drawing. I'm have Krita open right now. So something I want to show you guys, uh, before we get too far into this, I have a whole bunch of painting stuff. Um, I'm actually a featured artist for Rebel. My name is in the credits. I help beta test uh, Rebel 5 and Rebel 6. Um, I was a featured artist for Art Rage for a little bit. Um, whenever they went from Art Rage 6 to Art Rage Batai, um, I had some featured stuff in there. But uh, I use anything and everything. And in fact, I wrote a book about Krita. You can buy it. I need to put links to it in the... Uh, description but uh yeah i use anything whatever tool is best for the job so you'll see me jump around between quite a few different things like clip studio is great crit is great paint storm studio is awesome photoshop of course industry standard um i mean yeah what else we got corel painter which i need to get better at um there's even one called a project dog waffle which is great i'm gonna do a youtube video about it um but yeah you'll see a whole bunch of stuff here and we're going to use a little bit of all of it all the time. So the reason why I like to start with Krita lately, their sketch brushes are just great out of the box. I make brush packs. I sell brush packs. I have free brush packs uh, for Photoshop. And even Photoshop still struggles a little bit with how well just the sketching work. Um, Krita is up there with like Procreate, in my opinion, as far as like how it feels to sketch. Um, and sketching something I actually told myself this year I would get better at. I would do more of. So that's why we're going to start with a sketch. Normally I don't. Normally I block in big shapes, uh, 
paint in grayscale, start making forms, like carving it out. But now we're going to draw. Being a better illustrator and drawer, a drawing person, as it were, uh, you paint better. You just solve problems earlier, and that's always good. But I will stop yammering, and we'll get started. So I'm thinking like a a, a, a ghosty zombie e like Diablo Reaper of Souls type of thing. It, it sounds cool. It sounds fun. Uh, I'd like to do that sort of gothic e blues and greens and muted grays and browns, like the kind of grimy sort of stuff. So that's what we're going to just start experimenting with. No guarantees on how well this is going to come out, but <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, all right. So, and really, if you have questions about the process, just let me know. I'm going to start with a sketch. Then under that, I'm probably going to, uh, do value painting, then really start messing with that value painting. Um, yeah. I don't know. That's, that's how this works. <laughs> that's, that's how I do the thing. So let me get, um, all my stuff up here. And I will keep glancing over here just to make sure if anyone's asking questions in chat or anything. We got it going. But, uh, Let's start with this, man. So, fair warning, I am a terrible drawer. Really, I use drawing as like a map of how to put something, um... Put something down. Mm. Let's see. Um, yeah, about how I just put something down. There we go. Um, on a canvas to kind of block out. I, I really like working with light. And light is a painting thing, not necessarily a drawing thing. So, we'll see. We shall see. Mm-hmm. That look right there, and then maybe yeah, I really like Critter's graphite because it it just does that nice little subtle smudge that you can find working in like a sketchbook, which is also something I don't do enough, uh, which I should do more, but but hey, new year, new you. Right. <laughs> Where's the eye sockets here? Maybe like that? And then maybe... I always remember to... Do the mouth like an upside down D type thing. Eh, that angle's not correct, but we'll fix that. Good old liquify tool, man. Or here's what we can do. Let's put like a hood on him. Like one of those cool like Assassin's Creed style deals. And I promise this will look better once I clean it up, but... So, yeah, probably what I'll do is I'll just sketch to get in some... ...basic, uh, shapes, and then we'll lower the opacity on this layer. And then, like... ...sketch over it the more refined sketch, if that makes sense. Um. 
something I'm wanting to focus on this year. Um, well, I say this year. I, I basically said it as a New Year's resolution. I want to make my stuff more dynamic. Um, I feel like my art is boring. I, I feel like it's too flat sometimes. So I'm going to try more like foreshortening angles, three quarter view, reaching in or going back into the piece type stuff. I feel like all my stuff is very samey. I think every artist feels that way though. Hmm. I think this is throwing me off, but it's it's fine. Maybe that needs to be like further up here for what I'm thinking. Let me do that real quick. Yeah. Yeah, that already reads a little more like what I wanted. Do that. There we go. that out a little more. So here's the thing. Art starts pretty ugly. It's my piece of advice for newer artists or artists that don't quite trust the process yet. Just keep going. Keep going. Something I do like about Krita is no matter what brush you have, you just hit the uh, the E button to switch to eraser and it keeps the brush you have selected. So it basically just turns on the eraser mode more so than like a Photoshop where you can have a separate brush selected, you know? See, I think I'm trying to... I should probably block in stuff and then come in and refine it later. So, okay, yes. So, like, here's eyes. That angle's wrong. Well, I mean, I do not like drawing. That's why I need to do it more. It is part of it. What angle is this? That should be the eyes. Okay. Which means that should be the nose. It almost looks like the uh, slasher from Scream. <laughs> Which, hey, if we were wanting a scary duder, I guess that's a good one. That's another thing about Krita. It autosaves like crazy. I hope it doesn't slow the stream down or anything with all the autosaving. Here, let me... Maybe this will make more sense if I, like, put in... More... Uh, more, like, context clues. Maybe it'll read better. Because I'm thinking, like, if the neck is coming down here, like that, like... It should feel, yeah, like something like this and like an arm coming, you know what I mean? And then you have the 
big wispy robe. Like, because I think the body itself, like if the head is facing this way, the body should be facing that way. It makes it a little more interesting to look at. Holding something or other. Because that's a good way that you can build in that sort of forced uh, perspective. Or the kind of foreshortening perspective. Like a, a scythe. Me do. Okay. Give myself a little more room. So really my main goal, um, like the reason why I feel like I need to get better at drawing is all of my kind of art heroes that work for, you know, Games Workshop or, you know, uh, like Wizards of the Coast or whatever, they're all incredible at drawing. Um, you know, like the late Kim Jong-Ee, um, just remarkable, but also like kind of his disciples of Carl Kapinski and Lewis Jones and that stuff, you know, just really good. People that can draw.
Yeah, this kind of gives a... Uh, what are they? The Night Haunts? In... Maybe that's what this could be. Maybe this can be a Night Because that is a thing from Warhammer. And if the goal is to, like, have that vibe, like, what better thing than Warhammer? So, yeah. Let me finish blocking this in, and then what I'll do is I'll go grab some, uh, Night Haunt Eternal references and just kind of see what the design is and... Because, like, yeah, this feels like a Paul Dayton thing already. Which is good. That's always good. That should be closer. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. Gotta make sure the hands are right. Don't want to, like, AI-ify stuff. Even this doesn't... It feels a little too stoic. But, I don't know. We'll figure it out. We will figure it out. Really a lot of sharp... lines might help with that. Like... And then... We can get rid of some of these connector lines. Do something like that. Maybe I could do like decayed chest and then like. Would they have abs if there's no muscle tissue? <laughs> it would just be the rib cage, right? But we can Frank Rosetta this up, no problem. Give him some dope abs, dude. Working out, man. I wonder if be like a more extreme angle. Uh, yeah, something like that where it's almost like the shoulders are kind of hunched down a little bit. There we go. See, this this is why it's important to draw, is because like you can solve problems, like pose problems and does it feel dynamic enough and so maybe this actually comes back around. It kind of narrows up right there. So then Like that, maybe? I don't know. So I think the goal is like you you 
develop and you put sketches stuff down and you always need to get to that point to where you see it like you see something through what you have you, you see what's on the other side of it and you're like oh I, I i get it now and to get to that point you never know when you're going to get there so it can be frustrating but it's part of the process yeah, I think now is probably a good time to... Oh. Maybe get that reference. <laughs> Looks like he's wearing a Santa hat. Kind of. Right? <laughs> yeah. Silly old guy. Let's save that. Now, I'm going to look at... um Some... Get some night on. Images. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, that's why this feels like a Paul date because it's almost a Paul Dayton piece. <laughs> here, let me drag some over here. Um, here's one. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, okay. So they do have their chest exposed. Okay. So I was not misremembered. Oh, but they have the chains and then the... Ah. <laughs> okay. Um, let me find more... Here's a Phil Moss piece. Paul Dayton, Phil Moss. A few more. Yeah, that's pretty dope, right? I mean, it doesn't really focus on the night haunt and like the facial features necessarily, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we can just get like a vibe. But what it does show me is how they're doing some of this background stuff. Oh, that's a good idea. Because that's the silhouette of another. And, like, they have their, uh... What are those called? Well, those are called keys right here. But these things right here. Sensors? But it's spelled different, I think. Oh, yeah, duh. What I can do is just look up the game's workshop. Hold on. Oh, yeah. I mean, having the art is really cool, though, because I can sort of make artistic decisions. But, uh... I just... I think... Yeah, see... Okay, so it's like that type of stuff. Okay. Oh, so their scythe has that design. So yeah, that's helpful to have. Let's get a few more. Just so we can... That's a cool one. Yeah, bro. Look at that. But yeah, these sides are... Interesting. Rusted out and has a cemetery vibe right there. That's cool. 
So really, this is how I work. This is how I do. Usually for the bigger clients, they have very specific references that you're allowed to use. Um, but this is what I do. I just start kind of making a thing, and then early on I bring in reference, and then start adjusting. Let me find... Mm. Yo. There might be a few more that I am missing. Like a few more types. Well, that's a good one of the site. Let me let me bring that. Yeah, so see that? So that's a really cool one of the scythe. It shows the skulls and locks. So a lot of locks, a lot of locks and keys and... I, I think the Night Haunt are literally locked away souls. I think that's the idea. This might be everything we need to kind of keep it going. Oh, here's a good one. Oh, that one's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright. So we have our paintings here. Gives us kind of a good look. And then we have more of our mini stuff down here. So this is a program called Pure Ref. I love Pure Ref. It allows you to uh, kind of just make a reference board. Kind of position it the way you want it. You double click, it kind of expands the piece um, that you want. As large as you want it to be, you can zoom in and out without really a loss of clarity. Um, of course, you can't make an image bigger. You just, the way it has a little algorithm set up to where as you zoom in, see, you can still see the pixelation and stuff, but it scales it fine. Um, but really, one of the most powerhouse moves, which is going to be what we're about to do, one of the powerhouse moves of this program is you can right click. And if you go to Canvas, you can go to Grayscale. And it turns everything Grayscale. Which is great, because I'm a big believer in value painting. Paint your Grayscale to look right. And then anything you do on top of that is bonus. But see how well even this Paul Dayton stuff looks. Just in Grayscale, even. God, that's good. Anything over here. Like... And what's cool is you can tell kind of the secret sauce behind, especially Games Workshop, but you'll see this in Blizzard art and Riot games and all that stuff. The part where they want you to focus the most is going to have the highest contrast. So it's going to have the darkest darks closer to the lightest lights. And like here, you got that. You got kind of the outline of the steed here, but then you also have here. Because um, as you zoom out, you know, and kind of see it so you can see the darkest darks back here um but here it's great because you have a dark dark right next to the kind of a pop highlight so that's why even zoomed out here yeah the two lightest things in the painting are this sheen right here i guess from a candle and then um right here which is the light an exaggerated light coming from a candle right and then, of course, right here, you have your darks. Very high contrast here. Very high contrast here. 
I mean, pretty strong contrast here. But you'll notice things like uh, here, these characters kind of melt away. That's a very important thing because you'll notice that in a lot of art from big companies is like this. Like, there's a lot of detail. I mean, these are, you know, ghosts riding a horse, but the contrast is low. Like, the darks and the lights are very close together on the value scale because they're not the focal point. Like, you don't need to look at it. Um, it's cool to look at, but you don't need to. They would, you know, um, Paul Dayton would rather you look right here. He would rather, you, of course, you look right up here. Um, and see, this is smart because there's not a lot going on around where he wants you to look. Very smart. And look how relatively sharp that axe is, the rendering, compared to everything else. Smart. Real smart. I got good. <laughs> um, but yeah, and like even this type of stuff, I I think it looks beautiful. I love it. I don't think you could necessarily tell me exactly what it is. Like it looks like a mound in a graveyard, and arms coming up, and there's so. But like, there's no really finite. You know, this is what this is definition here, but it's not important. Like. You get what you need out of it. And see, like, these are just basic. Like, look how loose this is. But it works great. Because all this is is filler. You, you're using these shapes, these silhouettes, to further accentuate what you have here. Right. Anyway. See, I can talk like this all day. About, <laughs> I study these like crazy, dude. All the time. All the time. But it's a lot of fun. Another thing that's really helpful with um, Pure Ref. So like we can come in, we can take out the grayscale. And you'll notice that the other form of contrast is going to be color. So even if the contrast isn't great on this background, you make sure to divide the buildings versus the, the smog based on what the colors are. Does that make sense? So it's another form of contrast. And I mean purple and green across from each other. They're uh, complementary colors. So it works um, yeah, you're going to see a lot of this. Wow, a lot of the exact same purple. The same cyan, same magenta. Yep. Yep. Makes sense to me. Um, I like this, like, gross green-yellow stuff that I got right here. Cool. Um, this is interesting because there's nice oranges and, like, brown. Like, desaturated brown-reds. Like, rust. And you'll notice that this is back here with a little hint of the blue and all that to kind of tie it together. But then you get that same color here. And then here it's all basically monochromatic except for this lantern. And then that green candle. That's a cool idea though. Green candle. Dope. Alright. That's all well and good. But what are we going to do? Wait, is one of these poses almost, like, exactly the same? Hold on. Kind of. Well, no. But they have the same vibe, so that's good. That's a cool thing. Right? I think a lot of my design is probably going to be based on this dude right here. Because he, he is just so front and center. And it's such an iconic piece. I love this. I'm, I'm going to order one of these and hang it on my wall because I love this piece so much. Um, That's beautiful. Um, But, okay. Side note. Um, Another cool thing about Pure Ref is you can lock it to be the topmost window. All right? So if you, like, right-click, you go to Canvas, you can do the grayscale and stuff, you can lock Canvas, whatever. But if you go to a uh, mode, always on top, now I can go back into Krita or whatever program I'm using. And this is always, it's like a pinned reference board. You know what I mean? So. So, yes. Okay. So I see. Here's what we're going to do. Um... 
I'm gonna hit that messy sketch. Come up. I'm gonna call it refined sketch. It's still gonna be really messy. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lower the opacity, the messy sketch, and we're gonna use it as kind of an outline for our refined sketch. So if we come up here and we grab yeah, number two pencil. That's fine. Okay. So maybe we don't need this yet. Um, let me move this over. I have three monitors, by the way. Um, I'm going to move this over to the other monitor. I might glance at it a little because of the, the way the hood is. I like how that looks. So we'll look at that, but let's just go ahead and just try to sketch out this uh, face a little better. Let's solve this problem. So, so. Let me move it. Okay, there we go. I kind of like the angle of that, like the... It's really about like getting the eyes and like the weird sunken features because I know it's primarily a skull with the other with the with the night hunt eternals but I want to have a little bit of like gross stuff <laughs> not 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 pleasing in the least type stuff you know yeah I mean, that that's a better angle anyway. In the eye. So instead of it being the big skull socket, we actually have like eyes in the socket. We can make those like really gross and like creamy, like with no iris. Really uh put up some of that nastiness. Rank it, you know. And we'll say a little tip about like eye sockets and stuff. It's really, I mean, this sounds obvious, but you know, a lot of people just draw kind of the eyeball, like where the eyeball sits. I find that the most interesting parts are going to be the upper lid where it hits that kind of eyebrow bone. And then like down here where your actual like tear duct comes, I can't remember the name of this bottom kind of patch, but Sculpting that out really like this really brings in a cool, like, you can put a lot of personality in a face in places like that, you know, like, very, very cool. But yeah, this dude has seen better days, which is exactly what we, we want it to be kind of scary, but like, still kind of look badass, you know? Yeah. We getting there. It's like the Star Trek Enterprise or the Starfleet symbol. That's I can't remember who taught me that. But like making that bone, the nasal cavity bone, make it like an upside down heart makes it real easy. You know what I mean? And I can move this mouth over 
as well. So like this. Yeah. Make it kind of a uh, elongated. I should look up that scream mask because that's kind of what that reminds me of. A super weird long mouth, you know? Um but what we can do, but uh let's draw in some actual twofers here. Give them some teeths. But we don't want to make them buck. So we have to like rotate to the inside. Because you have to remember it's a that one. Um the mouth is a cavity, so it goes in. You want it to go in as much as possible. We have something like that. Yeah. And then like down here. I do think it's really weird that like they still have gums. Even though they're like really decayed and nasty. Yeah, that's cool. And then this comes back. Dude. Yeah, that's cool. Now let's bring this over. Oh my goodness! Part oh, of Michael Clark, what's up, brother? Hear the little, the little ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. Let me know something's up. What's up, man? So glad you can make it, dude. Spartans represent, dude, for sure. <laughs> We're just in the fooling around phase right now. Um, try to make it work. Make our our old uh, oh yeah, that could be like a boil or something. You know, uh, that's cool. I didn't mean for it to be that, but that's what I mean. Like, that's why I think getting better at drawing should probably be very high up on my list of things to improve on because you can get your happy accidents very quickly. Um, you can also do that in painting, but I do think the, the what's the old saying about technology? Like, technology allows you to fail faster. So, like, failing fast is the goal. Like, you want to get through the bad ideas to get to the good ones. So maybe that's where drawing really kind of comes into play, is you get to sculpt out and, like, without putting too much energy on stuff, you can, uh... you can solve problems. And that might be one of those things that you get discouraged at first because you're not great at the thing, but the more you do it, you know, just like anything else, you get better at it. But then you start seeing the results of 
dedicating to drawing or whatever. And like, okay, well maybe now I can't see myself without it. Like I can't, yeah, I want to get to that point to where it's like this phase has to happen. Because normally I don't, I just block in big shapes and I'm like, I guess this looks kind of like a thing. Is that I always talk about it like looking at clouds up in the sky. Like, oh, what does that cloud look like? That's sort of the approach I like, but I think solving problems quickly will probably do better in the long run. So if like this... And then like... <laughs> That's cool, and it can almost be like a knight helmet, like a... Um... He's like a peasant or something. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going with the, uh, kind of the hooded Grim Reaper thing. I know it's a little tropey, but kind of what I had on my mind. So let's do it, man. Um, looks like a, uh, Halloween outfit now. That's always the iffy thing about doing, like, real crazy you know dark art fantasy is it all looks like spirit halloween at a certain point and you want to try your best to not have it look like that but you know yeah it is what it is tropes exist for a reason you know much as i kind of hate to say it it's it is true Yeah, I can start to see it. So yeah, working through the real messy sketch phase and then kind of coming in and refining the shapes. I can I can see it. I can start seeing the thing better. So that's good. What happened to the music? Is it all just quiet? Oh yeah, just quiet. <laughs> I have this big iTunes playlist on the background, so... Let's see how that goes. Oh, thank you, Michael. Okay, I have my uh, Discord open. Let's do that. Oh, and I need I do need to take that delay down. I did that as like an anti spam thing, but I should probably just put that, you know. There we go. Back to our spirit Halloween right here. I think it doesn't help that the literal uh, mascot for spirit Halloween looks kind of like a this Grim Reaper. <laughs> I'm not doing myself any favors here, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm looking cool. So here's 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 an insider secret. Cause I was about to say, yeah, this looks badass. Insider secret: if you're working with a client and they don't quite know exactly what they want, always default to making something look badass. Always doesn't matter cool angles and whoa big dynamic poses and stuff um you're gonna hit more than you miss if you do that like you're you're, you're gonna get some excited clients because like whoa I've, I've never seen anything like oh man like <laughs> which is funny but it works i mean it is what it is And then we can get like the nasty like weird neck lines as well 
which is weird because like normally in this type of stuff it's a skeleton so you just have the bone you have just your, your spinal cord column coming down but here we, we, there's still some meat on the bone so you gotta gotta gross it up a little bit Ooh, another thing that we can do while I'm thinking about it check this out let me get that hidden let me sharpen that up and then here we go we're gonna do this 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 And the reason why we do that is so we can make a tattered look. Right now it looks more like broken ceramic or something. But trust me, whenever you get paint in there and, and you paint it and you can really like put the values and stuff, actually that wouldn't make sense. There we go. Uh, that's a little deeper than I thought. Uh, but you can do a cool, um, like cool shapes this way. Oh, that threw that off. Hold on. Don't like that. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That was looking too much like a, uh... Well, what's the lip around the, uh... I can never remember the name of things. I know what they are, but... Like the trim, I guess? That's the thing with, uh... Streaming. Anytime you need to know the name of something, you will forget it every time. Because you're live. That's what happens. When you live. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what, like, skin tone this is, or if it's even going to be skin tone. Because, like, if we look at, uh, let me add some. If we look at the Paul Dayton stuff, it's so interesting because because you have the skull and there's not a lick of meat on those bones, literally. But you look at the arms, they're not skeleton arms. They're like kind of in shape swimmer arm. Like they're lean and like the fingers are weird, ghoulish, like... So awesome. Like... Hmm. Super interesting. Um... SARS isn't quite fitting that vibe, but we'll, we'll do something. We'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. Turn that on. I can have my pose that we worked so very hard on. And see, like... is better because once again if we bring this over see how this is like the cowl that's almost like over top so right now I have it I have mine set up more like a trench coat or something but maybe we should do the cowl look to where like it's just over the top of the chest Let's see that. Oh. 
Tracer mobs on. Okay. So maybe if it's like, if I'm looking at this, maybe it's like that. And then, once again, we can air this a little bit. That's cool. So that's going to be the, the thing is like, I like the tattered part covering the forearm. What's up, man? Cad, how are you, dude? Oh my gosh. So good to see you, brother. So Cad goes way back. We're talking. Damn, almost, almost 10 years now, right? Golly, because I, I was streaming in like 2014, 2015, and Cad is one of the OGs. Crit again. What's up, Plastic Note? I have way too many art programs. It's only fair that I use all of them. And I wrote a book on Crit, so... Better represent it some, you know. But yeah, Crit just has some of the best sketching tools on the planet. Whenever we start painting, painting, we're probably going to go either to Paintstorm or clip or we'd say photoshop for the very exacting stuff at the end but love me some like or even if we want the thick brush strokes do rebel or art rage or something but yeah i jump back and forth like crazy so what do i want to do about this do i like that or do I do the Paul Dayton thing and show more of the arm? Because he does a really smart thing to where he covers up a lot of the ribs and stuff with more of the cowl. But you see how the edges start blending in. See that? How it starts blending into that background. Um... What's up, man? So, dude, I've been real busy, but, uh, but yeah, I'm a full-time artist now, um, doing YouTube and teaching and all that stuff, so I'm working on Star Wars and Warhammer. Busy. <laughs> it's fun. It's freaking dream job, man. But, uh, but yeah, I thought, you know, got the little ones in bed right now and family's asleep and it's like well if I'm gonna be drawing anyway I might as well just start doing this again um not every night or anything but enough you know multiple times um a month at least but there's gonna be sometimes I won't be able to stream just because the way the job works is like like for Star Wars I can't show any of that like I can't even announce what the project is um but it's like once those NDAs lift, then you can talk about it. Then you could. It's it's really cool to be kind of on the inside now, and be able to see how the inner workings really go. Um, same with like Warhammer and stuff. They they time stuff very specifically, so there's some stuff whenever I'm working I can't show it. So there's going to be some of that. Um, but really, like the personal art stuff. Uh, and like doing portfolio reviews for students and um yeah that type of stuff uh I think streaming would be really cool and then just put the archives on YouTube because right now I'm doing YouTube stuff as well but I can't quite figure out what I want to do on YouTube like it's going okay I have like 4,000 subs or whatever but I just don't know I don't know what is working well and what's not like I can't ever tell 
Um, YouTube looks to be way more um, oh uh, tutorial based lately, which is fine. You know, I do I do tutorials, but uh. My brain. Add that elbow in. I know this anatomy is not right, but I need to. I'll look at a better forearm here in a little bit. But. But maybe I'll do that. Have it. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah, dude. Not only that, so I have a almost two-year-old son named Oliver. Um, I have Gracie, who's almost 11. Yeah, Britt's doing good, man. Uh, she's teaching, and things are going good. And we got another little one on the way. Summer. Ah, oh, so much busyness. <laughs> Which is good, though. I like it. I'm gonna keep that off real quick. Yeah, it's busy, busy. It's it's fun though. Like I said, like, and the art stuff is amazing. It's so much fun. But the only stressful thing is, it's just like acting, to where the moment you're done with a job, you're unemployed. You know what I mean? Like as soon as you get paid, as soon as you sign the papers, all that stuff. Like now you're on the job hunt again. Be five, dude. It happens so fast. Yeah, like, uh, Gracie went to a school dance not too long ago. It's kind of like their version of prom. You know, for, what, fifth graders, but... It's crazy. So, here's what I'm thinking. I am going to... Let me turn this on. I'm going to turn this to... Um, multiply. This one also to multiply. Because I want to fill this, and what we can start doing this will this will help me see things a little better. I am going to start, um... I'm going to start putting in some values. Because I think right now what I'm struggling with is I can't mentally see what the pose should be and where things should be in time and space. <laughs> you know, like I said, I'm not a great illustrator as far as like drawing. But painting is where I feel more comfortable. 
we do this? Start off by a. Uh, That there. Then what you do, you select color, you darken it, and start rendering forms. Um, let's do, let's keep render his dark sockets. Okay, little softness of that light coming in. Okay, got, gotcha. But since mine are going to be eyeballs, they're nasty eyeballs, but eyeballs nonetheless. Let me come in here. Actually, I know what will really start to bring it up. So like, I'm thinking the lighting is coming from like towards me and then down at like a 45 degree, you know? So that's how we're gonna like this. It's basic lighting, but it'll get us started. So we can start to really see some of these forms and see how they work. So like... Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> it's funny, now that I have time to work on art every day, it gets, uh, gets easier, gets more fun. Because you can kind of learn it, and, you know. So that's going to be right there. So this could be like a flat uh, type thing. Like all that light is being caught. See? Because yeah, it's already starting to read better. Um, yeah. Let me stay zoomed out a little bit. That's going to help me. Get those nasty teeth in there. And then yeah and that's a good place to be just kind of applying the knowledge so I do a ton of studies dozens and dozens like per 
per month, I probably do 15 studies, like master studies of other painters, or and they don't have to be full big paintings. They can just be like little cropped snippets of stuff. But it's super helpful because it helps teach uh, how to solve problems. Like, how to really do the problem solving in a way that's repeatable, that if I get to a problem, a similar problem in like one of my pieces, I'll know how to fix it. I think what I need to do, I need to darken this, darken this. So that's the thing with this, that's going to be pretty soft. There's a bicep right there. Deltoid. I keep hitting the alt button to try to color pick, but in Krita, it's the control button. It's something I I have so many painting programs that like, I mess that up all the time. All the time. So what I need to do, I think, is a little bit of like a a checkerboard effect where I'll go light to dark to light to dark to light because that's a great way to build contrast quickly and to keep things moving so like there's a light which means that needs to be darker and then this can be darker on the outside of it you see. We're just kind of using the wet brushes right now, but just to kind of build this in. Same thing here. This is a very Rembrandt style of lighting. And hopefully it'll match kind of that Warhammer feel. And, I mean, throughout the process of this, we're going to definitely make it feel more painterly and stuff like that. This is just more of a... Click block in to give us a... Kind of a starting point once again the goal is to solve problems relatively quickly so that way you can just focus on painting like even kind of like what cad said you can just forget what you've learned and just you know trey dog what's up my man oh my gosh Dude, it's been years. Literally years. So yeah. Doing the art thing. That's what a majority of these streams are going to be. I might play games sometimes, but I don't know. I have that weird thing. 
I don't know if it's like hustle culture or whatever, but like if I'm not trying to refine my skills for my job, I feel like I'm wasting time. Does that make sense? I know which is not a healthy way to go about life, but it is what it is. That's the thing, my skills always have to be up at a certain level to get hired. So I have this weird guilty conscious thing of like, oh, if only I would have spent more time on this one study, then maybe the art director would have seen it and liked it better and I would have gotten hired, which is not realistic. And that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself, but it's what I do. See, I need to break up some of these highlights, I think. I think that's what's thrown me off a little. I'm gonna zoom that out. Man. Let's do pure. See, really, this is still just kind of blocking in. This is still very, very, very early in the painting, so we're still kind of just solving problems and... I mean, I want to say for, like, client work, paintings take about 60 hours. But for personal work, <laughs> paintings take like five hours because <laughs> I get bored easy and I want to like move on to other cool things. I think also what's throwing me off a lot. Let me. a lot of the form. Come over here. Do this. Then maybe some of the ligaments get caught right there. Yeah. Now we're getting there. I think, yeah, I think what was throwing me off is a little more of the, uh, that messier sketch, you know, was kind of crowding things a little.
<laughs> then what we can do, um, almost like a, a trademark, get some thick paint in here. Start messing around. He's a little overkill right now, but that's fine. That's fine. We can temper it back. Um, see, now I'm just kind of going into painting instead of drawing. <laughs> but uh, we'll draw some more. Wonder if. And then a fun thing to do every once in a while, just shut off all of the line layers, and you can start seeing how the painting itself is coming along. Um, so normally what I would do, um, and we're not even remotely close to this yet, but um, let's say I have my sketches. What I would do is I would probably bring my refined sketch down to about right here um, with the opacity. Then I would merge, like make a merged copy of everything. So exactly as I see everything, I will have a copy of that on a flat layer. That way what I can start doing is taking some of these uh, lighter and darker, you know, the values and the forms and stuff. And start working with the edges and really make it look painterly and really, uh, you know, like really strong. Um, like I said, we're not quite there yet. And then what I've started doing lately, I, I did this on all the Star Wars stuff, is I'll do the really kind of thick paint, but then I'll take a smaller paintbrush and go in and re-sketch some stuff, but using the colors and the, um, values from the paint. And it looks really cool. It's a neat effect. 
Um, I should probably finish designing my sketch. Before I go too far into this. That means the values. Actually, I hate to say, but values are going bye bye for a minute. Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. Sketch, what was it? A number two? Damn, it's already almost 12.30. I've been live for an hour and a half, y'all. Aren't you so proud? After what? Over a year hiatus? I'll bring that down even more, actually. Save. Crit is great about auto-saving, but, like, you should always save forever. So like, I wonder if, oh, wrong layer, bro. All right. What's cool about kind of the skeleton sort of stuff is like you can make him have nasty gnarled looking hands and it'll still look okay. Um before work. Hey, thanks man. I appreciate you, Cad. It's great to talk to you. I'm glad things are going well, man. Our kiddos. Oh, they need to just stop growing so much. But I appreciate you, man. Have a great day at work tomorrow. And yes, I will be around hopefully quite a bit. On the old stream stuff, so take care, brother. <laughs> so, I don't know how you all feel about the whole AI art nonsense, but the one thing that it really, um, it really shows is you gotta know how to draw hands because that's the thing people are gonna call your ass out on why do the hands look wrong the hands are hard as shit to draw bro the thing with hands here's here's the secret it's the same thing with feet they just look weird even when it's right it looks wrong that I mean that's that's as blunt as I can put it. Um They just don't it's one of those things that like a stylized hand looks better than a realistic hand. Like if you're going for believability, it's not about how the hand actually forms and contorts and stuff. It's about does it look right? Not if it is right, but does it look right? And that's a thing that's very difficult to get the balance for. So it's like, really, because there's multiple knuckles, and then the knuckles have an angle, and then that angle goes over here, and like, you know what I mean? It's very weird, but like there's that knuckle. So these knuckles have to be kind of right here. Then this side of the hand, but then, yeah. Well, and another thing, it's almost like a nose. In my opinion, hands are basically forms. You have your kind of squared off cylinders. 
So with line art, it can look weird. But then once you get the shadows and all that stuff, it starts to look a little more believable. Um, so I mean, for this one, like right here, this is fine for right now. One, two, three, four. Let me get rid of. Let me get rid of that. There. Let me bring this. And then like um what I should probably actually do now that I think is actually draw the thing he's holding. Which would be a sight. Now this is where we will bring in See they have axes right here but really the scythe is like this. So it kind of bevels out a little bit. Yeah, so something like this. Actually. Heck yeah. Here's another great thing about Pure Ref. You can do this. Go you know, like that. Ta-da! Boop! Heck yeah! Look at that! Ha-ha! Tricky hobbits. Now the hands are not correct here, but you know. Um, so if I do this mode, okay, always on top. Good. Bring that down. I'm just gonna try to duplicate this shape. Um, so it does kind of this nice upwards thing. And then like down. See the cool thing about this is it's like gnarled wood. So you can get away with it being fairly like jaggy or whatever.
<laughs> thinking about making his fingers like weird and long and sharp, but that didn't look quite right. So if we just kind of infer the thumb, this is no reference, so. Alright. Trying my best to remember anatomy from imagination, which is not smart. <laughs> I do not recommend people do that. Oh yeah, and they have a... Uh... See what I need. Kind of like a busted, broken hand. That wouldn't work that way. Um... Actually, let me try Yeah, something like that, maybe. It's better. Weird, but I think if we light this correctly, it will look okay. Let me get rid of that. Because the elbow would not be doing that. The elbow would be... And then they they do wear those those brackets or the kind of oh these cuffs right so let's try this like that maybe the angle's still not quite right here but it's close ish this is something that we can uh fix later with actual like real references um like for imagination stuff it's not terrible i mean it's kind of terrible but it is what it is, it is what it is Marco! Oh man, dude, it has been a minute, huh? Unbelievable! The famous artist. So weird, man. Dude, I I was actually listening. What episode was I listening to for Brother and Around? I think it was our wrestling like top picks, like our favorite matches. Such a good podcast. We gotta get the band back together. You know what I mean? Gotta, gotta do the dang thing. Big changes, dude. How's the little one? How's MJ? Cad was in here earlier, talking about his little one. It's like we're the parent squad now.
that actually does not look like a bad arm. I don't know what this is, but that's not a bad arm. not proportioned correctly and we can bring mm, I don't know what to do take a look at our references see that comes out But see, this is more of like a, this one's more like a flowy, like one of those Grim Reaper deals. Oh, he's in good spirits. Good. Yeah, man. <laughs> Grumpy old man. That sounds like the real deal. <laughs> Dude, we're good, man. We're busy. And we actually got another little one coming on the way in June. A little girl. So, we're going to have Gracie, who's 11. Or, going to be 11. Oliver, who's going to be 2. And then a newborn. Cool. So it's funny, this artist didn't even try to do body stuff, like chest and a clamp. We're going to, we're going to end up having a baseball team for too long. <laughs> Kiddos. Like, here, here's Chesty McChester. Right here. But he's not a night haunt. He's just a warrior fighting. But these are different night haunts anyway. So the way Warhammer works, I mean, at the end of the day, they're looking to sell models. Like they sell plastic miniatures. That's the entire thing. Everything about Games Workshop is is made to sell miniatures so all the books they write for the black library the white dwarf magazine that i am subscribed to um you know yeah the the, the novels um any of the animation stuff the artwork uh the codexes um all of it even like total war warhammer like all those games and stuff are made to sell miniatures, to, to play a miniature game, whether it's like Kill Team or Age of Sigmar or whatever. So, they have different factions within each faction. Like, okay, this unit is the melee unit, this unit is the, the, the archers or the, you know, the ranged spellcasters and all this. So they have their character classes set up. Um, but they have traits within all of them, like the Seraphon or the Lizard. But you have, like, different riders. They ride different, like, animals. And then you have the melee, and then you have the more kind of big, bulky... But each faction has that. So it's like finding what the common denominators are for the faction. So, like, even if you got, like, this is, like, a key holder, or whatever they're going to be called, you know, um, the long flowing kind of jailed l under lock and key look. Same thing here. You see a lock and key type stuff, right? Here's the locks that it's carrying. Then you look over here, same thing. You see the chains, you see the cuffs, the, the jail, um... Become one of the pillars. Oh, dude. If I became a pillar of any... <laughs> but, like... It's funny, because Warhammer is something that I didn't really necessarily grow up with. Like, I knew about it. And I played, like, the Dawn of War games. And whatever. But, like... 
going in and restudying art and going in and really leveling up and taking classes and buying tutorials and all this other stuff, the artists of Games Workshop are, I think, the best contemporary painters in the world. Like, I, I genuinely believe, you know, I know I would like to work for D&D &D or Magic the Gathering or whatever, but like, the ability of the Warhammer artists is absurd. Absolutely insane what they can do. It's on another level. Um, like, they are, in, in, in my opinion, they are the contemporary versions of Rembrandt and, you know, uh, Zorn and Sargent and, like, the, the people that you study in art history class, I, I firmly believe that the skill level of Games Workshop artists is at that point right now. Like, it's insane. If you, if you want to really look at their the top tier guys, like Karl Kapinski. Karl Kapinski is a madman. He can, he sketches from imagination. Doesn't really use reference anymore. You know, he's in his 40s, maybe early 50s. I'm not sure. Um, but he's done it for so long and he's worked at such a high level forever that he works from imagination. But not only does he work from imagination. Oh, no, no. He uses an ink pen. He doesn't mess with sketching or anything like that. He just goes straight for ink and does ink. But that's not enough. So what he'll do is he'll paint with his other hand as he's sketching in ink. And he's doing this all the time. <laughs> and I'm like, it's like if you're playing piano while you're playing guitar, while you're singing, while you're writing a term paper. Like, it's a level of <laughs> creating where I'm like, I can't believe it. And it's it's such a let me let me let me find a few Carl Kapinski Warhammer pieces. Let me just let me just let me just dabble. Real quick. Let me uh There's one that I'm thinking of that is just like Yeah, he's doing 5D chess upside down in space. Like the dude's in the Carl Kapinski Warhammer. There's the one I'm thinking. Here's one. God. Let me bring it up over here. We're going to take a little art appreciation real quick. Um, I'll just go to his website and scan through this. And like, you can do stuff from any angle. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Come on, man. You gotta... You gotta save some for the, <laughs> save some for the rest of us, like. And he'll he was knocking these out. By the dozens a week. Sir. He's a, he, yeah. <laughs> Get out, Carl Kapinski. Are you kidding me? There's one though. There's one I need to find it because it's kind of perfect. Like, I see it. I don't know how he does it. I mean, I don't know how he does any of this, but... Um... Where was it? It seems fairly basic, looking at it. But... What really drives it home for me is like... Okay. 
what really drives this one home is the perspective. You can see the perspective grid, right? Like whenever you're doing a sketch and you do like one point perspective, the thing like you put a dot and then you do that. You can see his thought process as he's doing that. But then the characters are perfectly in perspective. He's got the skulls floating around. He's got the ink washes with the subtle color shifts. He does this all at the same time. And like the skulls are in perfect perspective. I mean, and these are fundamentals. These are like art fundamentals. But the more kind of down the rabbit hole and like working for big clients and even like working for Games Workshop and working for Star Wars and stuff, it's like this is the stuff that impresses the hell out of me because there's nothing wrong. Like there's no, there's no error. It's perfect. Like how is he able to do it at this level every time? Because I, I mean, I like to think that the stuff I've made is pretty good, but like there's some stuff wrong with it. Like, I, you know, you know, the eye might be a little off or whatever. Like there's something up, but this is just, there's no fault. Like, there's no... It is as flawless as you can get with art. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Like, the decapitated head looks perfect. <laughs> uh, anyway. Crazy. But, okay, so say we have... Say we have this here, right? So that belt, we can add. Yeah, the arm I'm going to have to move. Well, am I going to have to move it? Let's see. I know that's exaggerated. Because technically, that angle does not make sense. But see, like, that's the level, that's the level I want to be at. And like, you know, we're doing okay, but I, I, I just, I'm, I'm hoping 15 years from now, you know what I mean? It's kind of like working out. It's kind of like the martial arts stuff. Like the more you do it, the more it makes sense, the more you, you find your own way and then it's all subconscious. Like you're just working that level all the time. And let's say one of these streams, I, I, what I'll need to do is a, a portfolio review of myself. Like how far I've come. Because it's kind of crazy. Like. It's, it's, uh. I've made some strides. You know what I mean? Like for sure. But, uh. It is so funny to go back and look at, like. Oh, yeah, maybe I can do this. Maybe that's a great cheat way of, like. Maybe I can wrap the body like this. And it turns back into. So maybe we have a little bit of like chest right here. And like. See, that's what I need to do is I need to just channel the power of Carl Kapinski. <laughs> and be like, yeah, yeah, do this and then do that. Um. But, uh. But yeah, I need to go back and look at some of my old art that I was like really proud of three years ago. It's embarrassing. Um, you know, and at the time, it, I mean, it's not embarrassing. Uh, like, I'm embarrassed to look at it now because I'm like, oh God, I can't believe I got hired for anything. <laughs> um, but that's part of it, right? You just get better the more you do it and...
was like, there's a bicep, right? The thing is, you want them to look in shape enough that they can lift up the sides and, like, all the big, raw, big stuff. But, like, you also don't want them to be buff. Because that's kind of against the, the, the thing. Like, it big-ass forearms. But maybe the rest of it's kind of sinewy. And then we add in some, like, more dynamic. <laughs> now it looks... Now it looks like he's wearing a... What, what is the thing that the, the women wear it and like, Gone with the Wind? Because their shoulder's up, like the bell dress? Or... <laughs> Here, let me do this. Get rid of that tangent line. That's throwing things off. So I will say that's probably been my biggest level up lately, and I have Lucasfilms to thank for it, is uh, the ability to look at something and know if it's not what I want it to be, just go ahead and fix it right then. Just like, don't worry, like, don't say, oh, I'll come back to that. Just do it. Just erase it and try to make it make sense and just do that all around the piece and keep working and keep working and keep working and then it's gonna it's gonna turn into something you know What would be kind of cool is if I wonder if the hand is like open, like the, this other hand over here is like open. That would work. Like it. Huh. <laughs> if you want to talk about drawing bad hands, check this out. it'll be like it's already wrong but I mean, what you need to do is just like find the perspective of it oh find the perspective of it
And you have like the fat, the palm. These are almost like weird Freddy Krueger fingers, but it works because they are undead. They are... And see, because his hand is like facing almost like a spider man thing. Maybe that's what I need to look at, like Spider-Man hand poses. Yeah, let me come back to that. Because that's the thing, working without reference, very difficult. Extra in fact, it's the hardest thing in the world. <laughs> it's like... Maybe, uh... that right there. I like how this layer is called refined sketch. This is anything but a refined sketch. This is real messy. Alright, it's almost one in the morning. I find kind of a good stopping point for tonight. I'll probably take tomorrow off and then maybe stream again on Friday. We'll see how the schedule goes. Because I would like to stream more often. Um, <laughs> especially more often than once every three years. But, uh, Maybe maybe once a week would be fun. I I don't know if there's gonna be like a schedule with time, but yeah. Let me let me bring this back real quick. Um, actually, let me go to paint. Wet. Brushes. Okay. That kind of like. Oh, no, 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 no. Wrong freaking layer. Boom, boom. Okay. There we go. That's why. Okay. Oh my god, I was like, why does that look wrong? I was on the wrong layer. There we go. That looks right.
There we go. I'm going to block this in. And right now it's just kind of getting these... Um, basic kind of tones in because this crit is not my main painting program. Like wherever I come in and actually want to like blend and get good paint strokes and all that stuff. Like crit is fine for that, but I just really use crit more for the, uh, uh, sketching side of thing. So if we come over here and look at this, and then like that. I wonder. A nice quick way to uh, fix a few of these form things. If you just get a nice old blender. Wait. Under texture off. Yes. Kind of go along these edges. So like, we're getting there. Yeah, this, this is a, yeah, um, probably at least once a week, yeah, at nighttime, whenever the family's in. I think that's a that's a doable goal because I usually spend at least one night a week doing personal paintings anyway so I I could just stream that you know so there won't be kind of the you know how we used to do it back in the day it's like oh well we're gonna have giveaways and we're gonna do all that stuff probably not that um, it's just gonna be more of a kind of chill out talk about stuff if other artists jump in and they have questions or you know if we want to do a Q&A or something like that like it's funny because I, I was actually thinking about this uh, probably a few weeks ago that I know like because you know for for chat's sake uh, Marco and I go way back way way back and we kind of started the YouTube hustle together and Twitch and trying to figure all this kind of content creation stuff. And it's funny because um, it was kind of aimless at first. Like we knew we wanted to do something and we knew we had something with podcasts and all that stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, and we had these like deep discussions where it didn't quite make sense why we were doing any of it. Like, why were we doing it? And so it was really aimless. Because we didn't really have a goal. I, it was like, oh, we're going to be popular and do streams. Well, yeah, us and 10 million other people. You know what I mean? But now what's interesting is um, now for me at least there's a goal. Like, Twitch can stop existing right now and I'll be fine you know what I mean like because my job is not this my job is being an illustrator and a painter for clients like that's my goal what this is in a weird way it's kind of an advertisement for that but really it's to hang out with other artists like there's an actual purpose now it's like okay if people want to see behind the scenes on how a pro makes art go to the stream like 
you're going to hang out, you're going to meet some people. That's the goal. Like, there's an actual reason that we're going to go live. Um, we're just going to... Because this feeds into everything else. It's like how Game Work, Games Workshop has all this ancillary stuff that feeds into one thing, and that is sell miniatures. Everything is feeding into, I'm going to get better as a painter. That way I get hired and I can make my living. That's it. Everything else is secondary. Even YouTube. The YouTube stuff that I've been working my butt off for like a year on. Maybe even more. Um, and for a while it was like once a week. Brand new YouTube video. At least 30 minutes long. Like, you know. But that was all to talk about and give lessons. To sell the idea that I'm an art instructor. Because I am an art instructor. Like, I have students and, you know. But like, to show what you could get if you hired me to be your art teacher. Like, there was a goal. There's a goal for those YouTube videos. Is an advertisement for my teaching. This is more just an advertisement in general for like, hey, this is kind of what I do. You know, I'm a pro. If you have any questions or you want my brushes or whatever, go for it. But, you know, my job is to paint. Like, that's what I do. So it feels different. It's a different deal. Like the, the stress is not, I need to make the most engaging Twitch video ever. Like mean, who cares? <laughs> who cares? I'm going to do the thing I'm doing anyway. So why don't we, uh, yeah, you know, like, why don't we, why don't we just do that? Why don't we go full force into that and do portfolio reviews? Hey, if I'm going to be an art instructor, if I want to help out the art community, let me do that. Let's live stream this so people can see their name in the big lights. They can get immediate feedback. Other people that are maybe too nervous to send in their portfolio might see similar stuff on someone else's and then get the advice they need without having to put themselves out there. Like, it makes way more sense now. Like, and, and Twitch is different enough from YouTube that they can be two different entities like they can exist at the same time and really the videos on demand on youtube of the twitch stream is to advertise the twitch stream if you want to hang out but don't worry if you can't make it because you can always watch the vod like you know totally you're going for a content like community manager it's perfect because you run god knows how many social and you have the stars of destiny podcast um, with the Suicoden remakes coming out, man. Oh, I'm stoked. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, exactly. Like, there, there's a reason that you're doing it now. Like, not to say there wasn't before. It's all kind of learning. Kind of like what we talk about, like the fake it till you make it. But yeah, it's like, we're gonna, we're gonna hang out. We're gonna kind of cut, cut our teeth on how it works. And now we get to actually talk about why it works. Like, yeah, we've streamed before. We used to stream all the time, you know, five days a week for seven plus hours at a time. Like, it's just not what the business is anymore. The business is we got our jobs. <laughs> How can we fit this thing in and still have fun, but also practice? Like, for me, this is practice. This is solving problems. And this, one of these problems might come up in a client piece. Like, oh yeah, I did the stream where I talked about, you know, blending a certain way or whatever. Like, who knows? But it's all, time, you know, time under the gun. Tattoo artists always say time under the gun. You're only going to get better if you have time under the gun. This is our time under the gun. Like, this is just more, more hours. The more steps you take on that journey, the further you're going to get. That's just how it works. Um, so yeah, I can actually see... Twitch fitting in that now instead of it being like well it's all or nothing if I don't make a ton of money and if I don't have a ton of engagement oh that's all for naught like no now we're just here to hang out for a bit <laughs> um and yeah and ironically and I thought about this too for both of us uh <laughs> we're probably gonna do better on YouTube and Twitch and stuff cause the pressure's off so we're more relaxed. We don't have to be the most like flamboyant, whatever. Like we can just hang out 
And I think that's going to draw more people in because I think people are starting to get exhausted with the overly hype all the time, yelling into the microphone. Like, I think, you know, we've always talked about that where people are going to get tired of that. And I think that's already happened, especially kind of post COVID. People are more, they want something more relaxing. Like, they want, life is crazy right now. Like, the world went through a collective trauma. So maybe having a place where people can just freaking relax and like, oh, let's just chat about goofy stuff or like every once in a while, let's watch a video game being played or whatever. Fine. You know, that if that's what the purpose is, that's the purpose. Um, but yeah, like, I feel way better about that's probably what brought me back to streaming is I was like, oh, now there's a reason. Now I can say go to my website, buy my book. I can point people in a direction. If I want to make money, I don't have to do it on Twitch. I have eight different avenues in the professional career, you know? But anyway, I think we're at an okay spot. It's not great. This is kind of a mess right here, the face stuff. Um. But really, it was just to kind of get the cobwebs out, make sure I still knew how to stream. <laughs> make sure we got the new layout set up and all that stuff. But yeah, um, Crit is awesome. Crit is completely free, for those that do not know. If you have Mac or Windows or Linux, it is free. Um, I do, um, do highly recommend donating to the Crita Foundation, if you can, at Crita.org. Um, I wrote a book about Krita. It's published. It's on Amazon. You can buy it. Draw and paint better with Krita. I like Krita a lot. It's really good. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's so weird being back again. It's like a whole different reality. Because it is a different reality, you know. Um, let me come back over here. Let me go to... Boom. So what's funny, um, I actually have a new webcam on the way. So this one is my old, old one that I've had forever. Um, it is the Logitech C920, but I'm getting the Razer uh, Kyo Pro, I think it is. The lens is way better. It looks like a DSLR camera. I already have kind of the lighting set up. In fact, probably can but... Let me, let me show you. Uh, I got three of these bad boys. For, uh, tutorials and stuff. And, like, I got one here. Got another one over there. Another one's actually back behind there, but I don't use it. Um. Uh, um. But yeah, I'm getting like fill lights and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, getting like updating all the stuff. Because, and the nice thing is, having all the gear, you can still stream, but it's going to be better for my tutorials. It's going to be better with like Zoom conferencing. It's going to be better for making um, YouTube videos, like filming stuff. I'm filming a lot of them on the phone now in 4K. But now it'll have better lighting. So it's all making sense now. Like, it's pretty good. But man, it is a treat. Thank you, sir, for hanging out, man. I'm glad you and the family are good. We gotta catch up, and now that travel restrictions have kind of lifted and stuff. I mean, Britt and I always talk about coming to visit you and Rose sometime. Have the kiddos, like, meet one another and stuff. That would be surreal um but yeah we'll we'll figure something out but yeah man we're back it's crazy a crazy life journey um but yeah all of these um videos will be video on demand after 24 hours on the uh, youtube side in fact I, I thought about this we're gonna see how this goes but if there's any incentive 
there might not even be incentive to keep affiliate for Twitch. I mean, we're not doing it for the money, you know. So it might be more wise to be able to stream like multiple streams at the same time. So do YouTube since the YouTube is growing and Twitch at the same time, you restream or whatever it's called. Um, just a bigger, bigger envelope of people. But if you do that, you can't, um, be an affiliate, but I know we worked so hard to get affiliate and like partner status and stuff way back when, but I, I don't, like now it's like I don't who cares um, if they really want me that bad they can sign me to an exclusive deal pay me you know what I mean put the well, what's the old saying put the, the dollars in the hand little man because yeah a lot of people uh, what I've also found is that YouTube and Twitch are very different the people that are way into uh YouTube or way into YouTube, and if you're on Twitch, you're lesser than, and then vice versa. If you're a Twitch person, you better be Twitch, ride or die. So it's weird. Um, it's kind of that way with paint program. Well, from what I'm finding out. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. Um, that's it. That's it for me. Good, what, two and a half hour long stream for my first time back. Just like old times, man. My, uh, my 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 quick streams used to be two and a half hours, <laughs> but now these are my long. But yeah, it's one twenty in the morning. Um, it's funny now that I'm looking at the webcam; it looks better than I remember. It. But now I'm really stoked to see what that razor does. Thinking about making content for YouTube to show what this one is, and then show the comparison with the other one and all that stuff. So we'll see. But that's it for me for tonight. We'll be live again pretty soon um, to finish this up or work on it some more. The nice thing is there's no pressure to finish this under a certain time. It's not for a client or anything. So I can spend as long as I want on it um, till we get it done and then show it. So, Yeah, fun stuff. Um, that is it for me. Thank you all very much for hanging out. It's great to see some of the old guard. And of course, I mean, it wouldn't be a stream without Marco showing um but uh if you're watching on youtube i appreciate you very much i will say you will get more dedicated youtube narrated videos very very soon i'm just waiting on the other stuff to be delivered um to update kind of the look and the feel and all that stuff um so yeah stuff is in the works i have a few videos already on kind of deck i have the scripts made and all that stuff so We'll see how that goes. Um, it'll be in the next few weeks. Um, we'll get some stuff up on YouTube. Maybe some more time-lapse videos and stuff. But for right now, um, hope you enjoy this. Two and a half hours should put you over pretty well. Uh, but until we see each other again, which will be very soon. Um, that's my time. Peace.